Who in here thinks that the public is mostly dumb? You think the public is mostly dumb? Let me tell you something. The public is about 300 million times smarter than you. The public is not dumb. For those of you who said, yes, I want to be a pop star, and yes, I would like to have a record deal, and yes, I'd like to make this happen, the first thing you should know is that the public is always smarter than you. If you put a song out and you go, that's it, that's it, watch it go, light fuse, stand back, everybody stand back, it's going to be a hit, it's going to be a hit, it's going to be a hit, and it goes like this. <laughs> who is smarter than who? Your big smart pop song went nowhere. And the public just told you, eh, they're smarter than you on that one. Because you said you had it and they said, I don't think so. And you didn't have it. So they're smarter than you. And that's what you have to deal with. They're smarter. And by defining your expectations, if you decide that you want to be a pop star, that's not a dirty word. It just means, pop just means popular. Frank Sinatra was a pop star. Jimi Hendrix was a pop star. Lots of people were pop stars. What kind of pop star? If you only recognize success as a record deal and a big fat publisher's clearinghouse oversized Tiger Woods check and a dinner and then going to the top of the roof and screaming, I made it! Most of you will be stunning failures. I'll tell you right now, most of you, I didn't do it that way. But if you define success by putting out your first record and selling 5,000 copies, going to have sushi when you say, yeah, I got 5,000 copies. When I sell 5,000 copies, I'm going to consider this a success. That's the difference between people who walk this earth happy and people who walk the earth constantly unfulfilled because they've never defined the finish line. I know artists who sold 2 million records. It's not enough because they never said what making it was going to be. They just had this feeling like it was their life. They were just going to know. It's not going to work like that. It's just not going to work like that. And you have to give people credit. Remember, they're smarter than you. You have to give people credit that they can see the things you're not aware of. And when you can do things that don't always telegraph. Because what I always say is, if you want me to think you're great, just write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to me. Please think I'm great. I can do that. I can think you're great. But I want to feel something. And again, there's things about you that you're trying too hard to find other things trying to find the newest, hottest, fastest thing. You don't even know what I'm looking at. You gotta give me some credit that I went, this guy's got a thing. I'm like, that damn guy, guy's got a thing. Believe me, I can see into it. And everyone else can see into it. And if you start thinking about working on that other axis of that soul thing, that feeling thing, and trust that people will see you're good. You don't have to play your newest, hottest thing. For people to see you. People will see through it. People can tell. They, I give them a lot of credit. You know. I just finished a CD and mm -hmm. I'm just getting, you know, ready to launch. I guess like the marketing campaign to get the music out there. And, and what year in Berkeley are you? I'm. This is my last semester. So okay. Like, good. Yeah. So um, finished it. Now, as a starting starting artist, when you first started, what did you find to very very helpful to market your music to get it out there? Besides the obvious stuff like MySpace, Facebook, um, good songs, good songs, good songs. That's okay. it. That's it. Good songs. I promise. I promise. You get on stage and you play a good song. Like I mean, a good song, not a song that technically has all its uh, body parts, but I mean a ten, a banging song, a song. You will have people waiting outside the door. Some of them may have business cards, some of them may just have bad weeks. They just want to talk to you. A good song will connect all of the time. And that's the difference between somebody coming up to you at Berkeley, if you play a good melody, play a good solo, you're in a good ensemble and a good calf show, and somebody comes up and they go, hey, come here, come here. That was great, man, that was great. So, man, we could get together and play sometime. What was that thing you were doing? What was it, were you showing me that? That's all very, predatory, they're taking. Whether they want to take a little bit and just play with you or take it all and just play what you've got and send you home, it's very predatory. And something happens when you play a good song for people who aren't musicians. And they go, they come up to you and they go, thank you, thank you so much. My dad just died or I just had, they will open their 
hearts to you, right in front of you, and you're still sweating and drinking a Gatorade, and they're going, my dad had a stroke, and I don't even know what to do. But listen, that song, thank, and they'll give you a hug. That's a hell of a lot better. Was that a big idiot? It really is about the song. When someone says, should I get a tattoo? I'm like, is it a good tattoo? I don't know. How good is the product? And whether it comes out on a cell phone or it comes out on some new product that hasn't been made yet. By the way, I will be introducing the new iPod at the end of this. Um, <laughs> but whether, whether you, whether you, it, it doesn't matter. You're always, people are always going to need a new song. You are technology proof. While people are taking cardboard boxes with picture frames and paperweights out of their office every six to eight months because of technology change, people no longer have Napster, now it's Verizon, Cast, or it's Blackberry. People who write songs are always going to be safe because they're always going to need what you have.